Ephesians 2.10 in the New Jerusalem Bible says, We are God's work of art created in Christ Jesus for the good works. James 1.22 says, Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. That word doer is poetai. It's where we get the word poet. So it implies artisanship. It, it implies creativity. So if you put these two scriptures together, it, it, it speaks of creativity. You know, and, 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 and I want to clarify from the get-go right here that, that creativity is not just for the painter and the musician and, and the movie maker. It's also for the business person. God has creative and artistic ways of doing business that breaks all the categories. But I want to notice, I want to note what he didn't say. He didn't say we are God's entertainers. Or he didn't say, be entertainers with the Word of God. And just as an analogy, I want to contrast entertainers with artists. See, artists are entertaining, but not all entertainers are artists. Entertaining or pop culture is about researching what's trending and emulating that. But art is about pioneering. Art is about ideas that never even been thought of before. See, artists are the ones that entertainers are chasing. See, Amy Simple McPherson, she was the pastor and founder of Angelus Temple, and, and, and she also founded the Foursquare denomination. She actually pioneered using theater to communicate the gospel. And uh, Hollywood actually came to her with ideas. Of course, this is in the early days of, of film still. And she was actually friends with Charlie Chaplin. So artists create new categories. You know, I, I, I really enjoy listening to podcasts. Podcasts, you know, you get information, fresh information. You know, when somebody writes a book, you're actually looking back in time because it takes time to write it and publish it and edit it and all these other things. But podcasts, you know, you, you're getting information in real time. But podcasts prove that experts don't really know. You know, experts say, well, no, you know, you can't hold anybody's attention for over 20 minutes. And if you don't break up a podcast and, or if you don't break up your information in 20 minutes, you lose people because they need little bite-sized portions. But the podcast lasts two and three hours. So what was true for other mediums isn't true for podcasts. Well, think of what other mediums are available we haven't even thought of yet. See, that, that, that's the artist. The artist is the one that creates the podcast. He creates the even new medium to relay information. And God has all kinds of this. And the, and the benefit of God, you know, in the world, it's trial and error, and you just try all these things. We, we serve a God that knows the future. He knows what works. He knows what will work before we even launch the thing. Ezekiel twenty two thirty says, I look for a man. I sought a man to stand in the gap. Now, in context, he was talking about, he, he was seeking an intercessor. But, but the overarching principle is, is God was looking for somebody to stand in a gap. What is a gap? A gap is a place where a need is not being filled. And God can show you a need that's not being filled in this generation, in your generation, that others haven't even thought of. I'm just going to warn you right now, I'm about to destroy a million and one messages on David and Goliath, but you know, some messages need to be destroyed because we view them in the light of Sunday school rather than their own historical context. You know, the, the traditional way we view David and Goliath is that David took a child's toy and killed a giant with it because we think of a slingshot it's like two rubber bands on a Y-shaped stick with a rock. But no, a slingshot, a sling was was two pieces of leather you know with a pouch at the end and they would spin that pouch around and around and it was almost equivalent to a gun and if you study many wars from that time even even in the bible it talks about people that that, that was skilled at using a sling and it was a deadly weapon what what david did do is is he broke warfare convention. See, Goliath expected David to come out there and just trade licks with him with a sword. Well, you're never going to you're never going to defeat your giant play into his strength. 
God gave him a way, a strategy, a warfare strategy that broke with convention. It broke with the traditional way of doing warfare. Well, God has categories and ways of doing things in your life that will bring down the opposition and bring down, if nothing else, the inability to produce. God has warfare strategies that we never even heard of before. I want to use an example, a contemporary example of of contrasting artists with entertainers. Consider the artist Jimmy Buffett. He almost didn't get signed initially as a musician because they said, well, he's not country or he's not rock. He's not, he don't fall in any category. And, and, and that, there's a little side lesson in that. People want to put you in their zoo. If people can't categorize you, they want to dismiss you. What do you do in a zoo? You take, you take the big scary animal that you're afraid of and you, and you try to subdue him, put him in a cage and label him. Well, that's what people, people are, people are afraid. Mediocrity is afraid (laughs) of people that think out of the box. And so they want to put you in their box. You know, I am a faith guy. I don't make no apologies about it. And everything I communicate comes with that in mind and, and is implied. And it's running in the background like background music if I say it or not. However, if you don't just stick to faith doctrine talking points, many people in that camp, I'll say in our camp, <laughs> will dismiss you. You know, well, there's, there's, there's things in the Bible that's in those pages that are stuck together that, that, that are important. Yes, yes, faith is important, and I believe in faith, and, but, but we, we need to build from there. You know, we, there, 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 there are other things that are important. But that's just a good example. You know, I might, I might go a lot farther if I just poly parroted every faith message that's ever come down the pike. But, but what's the point? I want to bring a fresh perspective of the Word of God that perhaps it, that's often overlooked. And God will do the same for you in your sphere of influence. But anyway, back to Jimmy Buffett. He, when he, he eventually did get signed and uh, became wildly popular, has chains of restaurants and created a whole different genre of music about ocean stuff. <laughs> well, now every other Billy Bob country guy that comes out is ripping off his gimmick. It basically regurgitating everything Jimmy Buffett did. Well, see, Jimmy Buffett was the artist. He created a new category. And all these Billy Bobs that are coming along and just basically riffing off his gimmick are the entertainers. They saw what worked for somebody else and now they're just emulating it. So so, so, so we, we want to be the, the spiritual Jimmy Buffett's. We want to be the ones creating categories. That way the world is pursuing us and we're not pursuing the world and we're just not just trying to emulate everything they do because people notice it. And they just, we just look so derivative of everything that's in the world that we have no influence. This was kind of a blind spot for me. And this, I'm, I'm just telling you what God was dealing with me about. That, that, that God has ways of doing things that we hadn't thought of before and to believe him for it. So what are some ways to, to, to releasing God creativity, divine creativity? Jer- uh, spend time with God. He is the creator, and the more time you spend with a creator, the more creativity will come out in you. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me, and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things. And the Hebrew says, Hit fenced in and hidden things, things that were previously unknown. So, So spending time in the presence of God, spending time in His Word, pouring over His Word, will, will bring out creativity in you. Spend time being quiet. Just spend time being quiet. See, God is constantly communicating with our spirit. Our spirit's in constant communion with God. However, the noise of the day-to-day and the noise of all the things coming in our, our, our natural senses kind of drowns that out sometimes. It's kind of like when you get up in the middle of the night and nobody's awake and it's real quiet in the middle of the night and the ice maker drops and it sounds like a dump truck. Well, you heard it during the day, but it wasn't that pronounced. So when things get quiet, your sense of hearing 
elevates. So when you get quiet and you just and you and you you just kind of you pray in the spirit and, and spend time you know and just get quiet. You 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 you're, you're, you begin to communicate with your own heart and the things that are dealing with you and those things will begin to rise up. A, a holy perception. And you'll begin to like connect dots and things you've seen throughout the day and say, okay, I, that this is leading to this, and I didn't even notice it. Uh, writing is a good way to uh, unlock creativity. You know, it says that David, it, whenever he was getting the plans for the temple, it says, the Lord made known to me in writing. So in the process of that process of writing, it unlocks something. It unlocks from creativity. Also, um, study the work of others. If you're a business person, read autobiographies. If you, you're a musician, study music that you like. If it's ministry, study other ministries and how they communicate. You know, this is where people will cry foul and say, aha, see, now this is what you said not to do at the beginning of the message. Well, let's, let's look at that. <laughs> Ephesians 5 1 says, Be imitators of God as beloved children. That word imitators is mimite. It's where we get the word mimic. So we just be mimic. You know, but it's not mimic in the sense of lockstep conformity. You say this, I say this. You do this, I do this. You know, if <laughs> that, that, that's, what, that's what the entertainers do. If it has this many beats, then we have this many beats. If it has this sound, we, we emulate that sound. But mimic in an Eastern sense follows the pattern. He says, as dear children. It, it, it mimics the way that children learn. You know, if, if a child's swinging on a swing and they fall off the swing, the first thing they do, if they're small enough, they will look at their parent. And if the parent shows signs of, oh no, you know, if, they, if, if the parent panics, then the child panics because they're learning how to interpret the world around them from their parents. If the, if the parent is calm, then the child will be calm. And so build that out further. We learn to navigate very complex social situations by following our parents. I have a really good memory of my childhood. I mean, three and two and three years old, I remember very, very easily being that age for whatever reason. I would try to pretend I didn't know as much as I did because, hey, you never told me that. But I actually knew more than I did because I watched them. And by watching them, I learned to navigate. And, and it, it's, it's actually pretty miraculous. The things that we learn just by watching others and mirroring and They even say we have mirror neurons in our brain that we... And, and, and by doing that, we extrapolate that information and are able to navigate these complex social situations. This is the way the wisdom literature, like Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Psalms, and the, even the ancient law codes, you know, were, ex, were expected to work. And we miss that when we read them. But if you notice, you know, whenever the guy was out picking up sticks, Moses sought the Lord on what to do. If it was just a matter of following it to the letter, he would have just turned to the page where it said it. No, he sought the Lord. So uh, the, the, the way the ancient law codes work, for a good example, Paul says, you know, don't muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. It's from, it's from the, the ox laws, talking about ox, oxen. And yet he uses it to apply to how to support ministries. So the, the ox law was an illustration of a bigger principle. And that's the way this is. If we, if we study other people, we're not just imitating what they do. It's like uh, uh, another another example. I'm throwing a lot of examples because I'm trying to communicate things that are kind of <laughs> I haven't thought about that much. But it's like like you, if you I used to watch Bob Ross on Saturday mornings and he'd paint his little happy trees and happy mountains. It wasn't. The purpose of that wasn't that I could put my tree exactly where his tree and put every limb and, and follow. He was teaching you the technique. He was teaching you the artistry behind it. And then it was supposed to go through your filter of your, of your life experience and your lens. And then you were supposed to do that. That's the way 
that's the way this this word mimic is. It creates a creativity and it and it births a creativity by watching people that do these things. You know, and it's interesting to me. It's kind of another sidebar. If you ever noticed, even secular artists, whenever they tap into that deep part of them, they may have the wackiest worldview outside of that that you've ever seen. It's that when they tap into that creative God part of them, they will portray biblical values, these Judeo-Christian biblical values. Clear-cut good guy goes about your clear-cut bad guy and, and, and good wins over evil. And that's the ones that resonates with the population. Now, you know, the critics will hate it because they, you know, they don't think it's artistic enough. But, but, but in order to resonate with people, because it says in Ecclesiastes, God has put eternity in the hearts of men. You know, and, and, and it shows you people are looking for the gospel message. They're looking for it, even if it's portrayed fictionally, that they're looking for that. Now, you know, and, and, and whatever movies or whatever deviates from that pattern then then it don't it's not well received other than just other critics and they've received awards from these kind of artsy awards that nobody else cares about <laughs> but but to but to have universal appeal it usually follows these godly principles why because that creative part that creative part is that god part on the inside of us Matthew eleven nineteen says, Wisdom is justified by her children. And if you look at another translation, it's works. In, in, East, in, in biblical Hebrew thought, creative works that you brought forth by the, you know, of course, the Lord helps us, of course. That's implied. But these things that we bring forth is like your children. It's something you've birthed, you've created. And, and the Bible uses that analogy. The reason I say that is, is people and even well-meaning Christians will try to shame you for trying to in- increase your scope and your reach with what God has put inside you. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm jealous over the things that God has given me, the revelation that God has given me, and I want to get it to as many people as, as I can. Paul says, I magnify my ministry. See... The way to know if you're seeking your own glory is not how passionate you are about getting out the message God has given you, but the source of your information. Jesus said in John 7, 18, that person that speaks out from himself is a source. In other words, it's not biblical principles. It's just your own goofy stuff you made up. And when you do that, he says you're seeking your own glory, but not wanting to increase the scope of your influence. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, You're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand that it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and give glory to God your Father who is in heaven. So we are to believe God to increase our scope. And it's not wrong. Jesus said we're supposed to do that. And if God is going to be magnified in the earth he has often it'll be done through his people through us increasing our scope and one ways we do that is by allowing him to create other categories create different categories of doing the word of god or doing business if you're a successful business person people are going to seek you out and find out what you're doing and then it opens and it becomes a platform for ministry so these things apply all together. You know, I, I personally apply them as a minister because that's what I do. But but we want to be God's work of art and not God's entertainer. We don't need to be pursuing every other avenue of the way the world does things. We need to allow God to birth fresh and new ideas through us.